Blesses y'all as GCP. Today we're going to talk about the five things you need to do if you're living with a household of living in a household of unbelievers or an unbeliever, at least one unbeliever. Cuz uh the Lord is revealing to me many of y'all are living amongst unbelievers and it's hindering your walk cuz they discouraging you, and you kind of scared to profess your faith and also they are discouraging you from doing the things God is calling you to do. And that's intensifying this hour as this antichrist spirit is becoming more rampant and more aggressive. So this needs to be addressed. Um, it's five steps. Hey, I, Holy Spirit revealed to me five steps of what you need to do. Not in a specific order. It's all like in one, but it's five different things. So one is understand that they don't have any understanding. <laughs> understand that they don't have any understanding. What do I mean by that? Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. Paul says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. So to those who have not gave their life to Christ, who do not see the light, who do not understand that the wages of our sin is death, that we deserve death based off of what we've done in this lifetime, that we need a savior, that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose on the third day and ascended to the right hand of the Father. To those who have no understanding of that, the preaching of the cross is foolishness, but we understand it's the power of God. So first off, you have to understand they have no understanding. It's not, you know, that we're better than them and all that stuff. They don't understand. It's just really that simple. They don't understand. So get that into your head. They don't have to understand that. And that'll save you a lot of frustration to even get into these next things. And number two, blood does not make you family. It makes you relatives. Hallelujah. One more time. Blood does not make you family. It makes you relatives. You know, we say that in a secular sense a lot, but it's even more true talking about the gospel. Um, if you know, The story we're going to turn to, uh, well, I'm going to read it from Matthew chapter 12 but the story is also in uh luke chapter 8 where jesus is preaching in a village he went throughout every village preached it says in uh, luke 8 1 he's preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of god and the 12 were with him those who are doing the work of god were with him and you could also interpret showing the glad tidings of god of the kingdom of god as showing uh manifesting the power of God or the gospel or the good news of the kingdom. Glad to, you, can, you can look at glad tidings and gospel and good news as synonymous. All those are the same thing. It's just different words to say the same thing. So now I'm going to turn to the Matthew version of that same story because it's a little bit more in depth than the Luke version. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 12, starting at verse 46. Where he's preaching and his peoples, his mother and his brothers, they're trying to interrupt him to tell him something. But, you know, nothing is more important than doing the works of God. And Mary, who had an encounter with God, she spoke with the angel Gabriel. And that's it's very few people that did that. One of the other people that did that was Daniel. And Daniel had all these end time visions and all these. He's wanted to, you know, have one of the most significant visions in all the Bible. And Mary was blessed enough to speak with Gabriel face to face she gave birth to the son of god knowing that she didn't lay with any man so it can't be no doubt in her mind that this is the christ it can't be no doubt in her mind that she had these encounters but even her having these encounters still had some i would say lack of faith not doubt but lack of faith and a lack of understanding where she would try to come and interrupt him doing his father's business to tell him whatever they felt like they needed to tell him you know, so it also goes to show you that you can also be unequally yoked with believers. You know, you can be unequally yoked with believers that have the lack of understanding. So it's not always just people that are not of the household of faith. It can be people of the household of faith that can be a hindrance to you. That's something to keep in mind. 
But um, we're going to start at verse 46. It says, while he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Who are my brethren? Hmm. Who are your mother? Who are your brothers? Who are your sisters? Well, next verse he's about to answer that. For verse 49, he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples, the 12 that was with him when he was preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and said, Behold, my mother and my brothers, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same is my mother and my brother and my sister. I said, I said it out of order, but it's the same thing. Those who are doing the work of God, those who are your mother, your brother, your sister, your father, those are your real family, especially in this hour. Understand that. Blood does not make you family, makes you relatives. Now, hopefully your relatives will come into the family of the household of faith, but they're not necessarily your family. Your family is those who are doing the will of the Father. We're going to go to another... Um, Another scripture to confirm that is we're going back to Corinthians, but this is 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. And um, Paul says, and will be a far. Okay, well, I got started at 17 because I'm going to start at verse 14 for another bullet point. But for here, we're going to start at 17. He says, wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. That's good. We're going to get back to that. Say if the Lord and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Verse 18, and I will be a father unto you, and you shall be sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. He's quoted in Jeremiah 31, verses 1 and 9. And um, according to this uh, 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 bullet note point right here in my Bible. And um, that's, that's just explaining what Jesus was just saying in the gospel, in the gospel of Matthew. If you come out from among them, touch not the unclean thing, you become new in Christ. You accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You repent of your sins. You get baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are a new creature, and you become not just a creation of God, but a child of God, a son of God, a daughter of God, which is raising your rank. You are not just his creation. Everything is his creation, but you become his Son, you become his daughter. You've entered sonship. Those are the household of faith that have done the same thing. Those are your mothers and your brothers and your sisters. You know, your fellow, your fellow sons and daughters of the faith. Those are your, uh, that's your family. Amen. 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 And um, I really need to hurry up this video because my phone talking about this battery getting low. Uh, I want this video to cut off, but, um, the next point, point number three is come out from among them and we're going to go to first Corinthians chapter six, verse 20 and come back to second Corinthians. Let me hurry up this video for my phone. Duh. I have my charger right here. Thank you, father. Thank you. Holy ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And he says, um, for you are bought with the price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is God. So when I say come out from among them, don't you can't you can't preach the gospel of Christ and be living like a heathen. You can't talk about being a chosen people, a, 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 a peculiar people, but you're living like the Gentiles. You have to come out from among them. Otherwise, your testimony is void and and and, and, and uh is void and it's uh polluted is corrupted you know it's a false testimony because you're not practicing what you preach you have to practice what you preach that's not about being perfect but people need to look at you and see that okay this person is really about following god this person is really about christ and not just talking about it and that's what is giving the modern day church so much discredit especially the western church where a lot of you know like to talk about christ you like to talk about the gospel but we ain't living it we living just like everybody else and worse sometimes. Um, 
we back at 2 Corinthians verse 14 through 17. It says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for, well, this is actually the point for um, number four too. You know, this is really the basis of everything. The 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 14 through 18. It says, Paul says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion have light with darkness and what concord have Christ with Belial or the devil or what part have he that believeth with an infidel and what agreement have the temple of God with idols for you are the temple of the living God me GCP as a believer in Christ as a son of God as a child of God I'm the temple of God, he's inside of me. You, child of God, son of God, daughter of God, whoever's watching this video, you are the temple of God because all of us are the physical manifestation of the son who was crucified and ascended to the right hand of the father. We are the physical manifestation of his body now. He is the head, we are the body. He never, when he left, he never left because we became him on earth. So that's why he said, these works that you'll do in greater because he's in us and we're in him. Because he's in the Father, and the Father is in him. Amen. Thank you, Father. Um, and what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and they will be their God. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. You gotta come out from among them. Otherwise, the testimony of Christ is void. Your testimony is corrupted. Um, that also means that if you have the ability to stop hanging around people that you know are non-believers, you know, how are you gonna minister to darkness when you're fellowshipping with darkness? Paul says, What fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? If you're spending all this time with people that are walking in darkness, they're gonna convert you back to darkness before you convert them to the light. You have to, to convert, you have to reach in and grab them out. You can't grab them out and you're still in there. Understand that. And I've made that mistake many times before, and I'm sure a lot of you have too. You have to step out to step back in, if you understand what I'm saying, to fish them. You can't fish, you can't be a fisher of men if you're in the water yourself. If you drowning yourself, drowning in sin, you got to get out the water and then, you know, throw your net and then you get them out the water. You can't do it if you, uh in the water yourself, you know what I'm saying? You gotta get out of the, that habitation, you gotta get out of that environment if possible. Now, if you're in a household of unbelievers where you cannot leave, you're not in a position of authority, you're, for instance, like a wife um, is un under a submission under the authority of her husband or the child under the authority of their parents, then, you know, that's a different situation. That's where you're gonna move into uh, verse four right now. But if you have the option Get out of that environment, whether it's your household, your neighborhood, or just the people that you surround yourself with. Come out from among them if you have, if that's an option. For four, number four, intercede slash bear persecution slash understand that you're dealing with spirits and not people. If you're in a situation where you cannot lead the environment, or even if you can, you can still need to intercede for them, but especially if you cannot lead intercede for these people pray fast because understand that we walk in the flesh but we're not warring after the flesh the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds you are battling spirits that are targeting you through these non-believers and lukewarm believers because they know they see the light in you they they recognize the light in you and they're doing whatever they can to get you off your course of your own destiny and also to get you off the course of interceding from them that they, that they may see the light, that they may come to the household of faith. So being a, a believer, really really being in this faith, you have to be selfless. Because not only you got to work out your own salvation and fear and trembling, but you got you to gotta put in work for other people too. It's, it's, it's an exhausting thing. You get exhausted sometimes, but the Lord said there's no temptation. It's another scripture you wanted me to point out too, because I know some people are already doing this and feeling overwhelmed says, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, he says, There have no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, 
but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear. So just keep that in mind that it's not your responsibility to convert them. It's your responsibility to preach the gospel and to live the gospel. Understand that. And God will soften their hearts as they are willing to receive it. Pride is probably one of the biggest blockages of deliverance. And, you know, you got to pray against that spirit of pride. Pray that the scales be removed from their eyes. And you got to leave it to God. And, you know, it's up. It's not up to you. You just have to play your part. It's not going to be easy. You're going to face persecution, you know, in different ways. People just being aggressive with you or just things. You, you don't understand why they act in a certain way. It's not them. It's the spirit. You understand that when you're in situations like that, God is, and God is not changing the situation immediately. That's because... One, he's have you there to intercede from them, but he's also showing us things about ourselves inside of us to purge more darkness out of us and create us more into the image of him. So the, whatever the enemy does for evil, God still reverses it for good. So just always keep that in mind. And number five is this most simple one. Be bold. Be bold. You understand that they don't understand. You understand that who your family is in the faith. You understand that you cannot be like them. You have to come out from among them. You understand that you have to fight for them, intercede for them, and that you have to bear persecution to a certain extent. And you have to be bold about who, what you believe. You know, you have to be bold about it. Let's turn to Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Very popular passage of scripture. Verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Underline that right now. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And that goes back to uh, 1 Corinthians um, 1 and 18. The first thing we were talking about, that they don't have understanding. But um, um, for those who perish, the preaching of the God of the cross is foolishness. But we are, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, which is the gospel that he died on that cross for our sins and rose on the third day that we may be, uh, re uh, 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 what's the word? Um, we may be resurrected as well and uh, restored to the Father. That's not foolishness to, uh, to us. We understand it's the power of God unto salvation because we believe. Because we believe. So... Because we believe this gospel, we understand the power in it. We must walk boldly. We must walk boldly. Because no one's going to walk boldly in something they don't believe is what it is. It ain't the real deal. It ain't the official tissue. That ain't what it is. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's going to, you know, they're seeing these martyrs across the world. Nobody's going to die for something that they don't really believe is really the truth. Nobody's going to be going to suffer persecution and allow people to mistreat them and talk about them and disrespect them or whatever you're going through with these unbelievers and unequally yoked people if you're not serious about what this is. So when people see how bold you are, um, not only in speaking the gospel and, and, and preaching how you, you believe in Christ with boldness, but also living the gospel with boldness. When we see this verse, a lot of times we, we, we look at it as, you know, I'm not going to deny Christ. I'm going to preach the gospel or whatever, which is great. And that's important. And that's, yes. But it's about living the gospel too. And that's another video that, that uh, the Holy Spirit is leading me to uh, to talk about in another video that I'm going to get to. For those of you that feel like you don't have a ministry, everybody has a ministry. Even if you're not in ministry per se, even if you're not in the fivefold per se, everyone has a ministry that's a belief in Christ because your life is your ministry. But that's another video. We're going to get into that. But um, so if your life is your ministry, you have to preach the gospel with your life, preach it with your life, with boldness, because nobody is going to suffer the persecutions of Christ. No one is going to suffer being an outcast because they're believing in Christ. No one is going to suffer these things with boldness if there's nothing to it, if, unless they truly believe in it. So people will, some people be converted just by your boldness. Some people will be intrigued just by your boldness, not just with your words, but your actions. We got to preach the gospel with our actions, not just our words. Amen. I'm coming up on 20 minutes now. I'm going to go ahead and limit it now. I mean, uh, uh, in the video right now, this is something the Lord has been putting on my heart to do five steps, five things to do 
five steps if you're un you know uh, unequally yoked with believers. Um, share this video. It's a lot of people that need to see this. The spirit is telling me that, and um, as I get better in putting these videos together, we gonna you know I'm gonna put more stuff out here. You know I'm getting better with it, taking the notes this time, and got the <laughs> got the bullet points. First time with the bullet points, so. You know, y'all pray for me that the Holy Spirit continue to anoint me, anoint me to do what he's put on my heart to do. Amen. So I love y'all. Keep praying for me. I'm praying for y'all. Um, stay focused, but also be encouraged and know that Jesus loves you. He's with you to the end. He's with you now. And he's seen the, the end from the beginning because he lives outside of time. So just cleave to him. Clean to God. Talk to him all the time. Understand that he loves you. The understanding that he loves you is more than just saying, well, Jesus loved me. He died for my sins, all that. Understand that he loves you where he's with you all the time. He has plans for you to prosper. He has plans for an expected end for you. He's trying to guide you in the way that he wants you to go. You know, you have to get that relationship with God. Spend time with him. Spend time with God today. Make sure if you if you have a time, uh, struggling, spend time with God. Set a time on your phone, you know. At least once a day, say, I'm going to spend 20 minutes talking to God, you know. And I'm going to get into that when I get into my series about prayer. But like I said, just continue to pray for me. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm preaching the choir too, you know. I got to do better myself. But uh, I just pray and ask God, continue to anoint me to get better with these videos and teachings and give me understanding for myself as well, not just for you guys, but to better myself. And we all in this thing together. We're all brothers and sisters in the faith as we were just reading the scripture. And let's continue to... Walk in the ways of Christ and let the light be shone, shone through us that others may become house, uh, members of the household of faith as well. In Jesus' name, I love y'all. God bless y'all. Have a blessed day. Service signing out.